Hey guys, Cube Hamster here with a uh, bit more commentary on uh, Mega Gargantua. I actually wanted to record this video yesterday, but it wasn't feeling very well. <clears throat> it's a bit better now though, but um, maybe you can hear by my voice, it's still not perfect. Um, so yeah, this thing is huge. Uh, lots of changes. I think one of the coolest one is... Uh, yeah, kind of changed the uh, walking animation. The original one walked by like a sort of like a walking lion, and this one uh, walks more like a dinosaur. Um, but let's go up the uh, sky elevator. Um, basically, what I want to show in this video is a, a bit the mechanics, and I also kind of want to use this as an uh, instruction video on how to operate it. Now technically it's um, kind of made for uh, yeah for three people. Um, and I'm on my own now, so I'm gonna have to probably switch the game mode one here and there. But let's go to the cockpit. Um, one of the things I didn't really show. In the uh, original video is I I mean I showed you can start it up but uh, yeah for the people that that have seen the uh, original or like the, the previous version of Gargantua uh, the stop function is on the other side so if you toggle that uh, the whole machine stops and then you can start it up again um, it's best to have multiple flints because they uh, they do take damage um, over time, but uh, yeah, there's plenty on board. Now, there's a couple of controls. Um, so I have to start and stop. Then um, the right one trigger down here is a torpedo that you can only fire when standing stationary. And the one on the left is the uh, precision bomber that flies a certain distance and then bombs it. Uh, and we obviously have the, uh, the TNT cannon. Um, unlike the previous design, this one's 100% reliable. The uh, the previous version would derp every now and then, but as you can see, like it's completely locked in place. Um, so yeah, this is very nice. Uh, let's actually uh, stop it and uh, try firing some missiles. Okay, so the uh, the bomber. She switched the game mode one. Now this one, this torpedo is, uh, yeah, it kind of has the uh, the trigger at the front, and then all the TNT uh, around it. Uh, lots, quite a lot of TNT actually, uh, but the TNT really flies in all directions. So this this one is kind of for collateral damage. Uh, not so much as an explosion that's sort of facing upward, uh, forward, uh, which is more what the uh, the Tomahawk missiles do. Uh, but as soon as this thing hits a block somewhere, uh, say there, um, it triggers, and you'll see that the uh, like it goes everywhere. So, um, I mean, hitting <laughs> hitting Gargantua with one of these would destroy it pretty much uh, but I will show you in a sec that uh, there, there's a lot easier ways to disable Gargantua than uh, shooting it with a, a TNT missile um, then we have the um, the precision bomber so let's actually fire that one Now I I did a video on uh, on the precision bomber um, because I mean now it flies sort of a fixed distance but the cool thing about this one is if you configure it with a sort of a launch pad with a timer you can basically say I want this bomber to drop the payload uh, a thousand blocks away so what you could basically do is you have a, an enemy base somewhere in the distance you build this and you you have to know the coordinates of the base. 
but it will basically just fly over it and uh, drop the payload. Uh, seeing as that the, the activator was in the back, I didn't really have enough room to... Uh, yeah, there's no way to get uh, like a, a timing mechanism in there that you could toggle for different distances. There's not enough room. Like it might be possible, but just didn't have the room to do it. Um, so we have that. Then if we walk all the way to the back, now adding these walkways was a pain. Like. Uh, you had all the different mechanisms and you had to somehow squeeze them in between or use the mechanisms in place and almost all the pistons that are in this yeah, sort of walkway configuration are at their limit which is uh, like 12 blocks but you can pretty much walk everywhere it's just all the way to to the side now um, this is the uh, BO2 side mounted cannon. Um, place your TNT there when stationary and you toggle it and it shoots pretty far. Um, and the reason I'm using this fire is because you cannot move Gargantua without this uh, piston being retracted. So this basically forces you, it actually happens automatically, this basically forces you to trigger it twice. One times to fire, one times to reset it. Um, now, as you can see, we shot over there pretty far, but this is a multi-range cannon. Um, it only has two settings though, uh, far and slightly less far. It's still pretty cool though. Um, what you can do is you can trigger this piston and it basically stops the uh, slime platform here from going up. So if I trigger it now, as you can see this one stays down and the other one still extends. But because the uh, TNT when activated jumps a little bit, the top bit of the TNT will get hit by the slime uh, block here and it will still get launched. So let's actually see that. If I can look at there fast enough. There we go. So it jumps up a little and then shoots. Now you have to be really careful but you can actually trigger it while it's walking. And um, let me, oh, I'm still in game one. So let's actually try and do that. Um, and with all the uh, pistons that are moving, you have to basically trigger them right after they've moved. Because uh, if you if you do it too late, it, it might crash the whole thing. Like it's a really de delicate machine. Um, okay, so, but yeah, we can pretty much leave uh, a trail of destruction using uh, using this. Uh, not shooting very far now. Um, but yeah, let's try triggering it. So that's fine. Like you have some time. It's not like it, it's you have to do it instantly. But there we go. Uh, so now we're shooting far. And again, like, imagine just a line of TNT holes going to the right. If you constantly fire them, you, you basically end up with a, a giant line of holes. Um, now, that's not the only thing you can do on the left side. Uh, I, I figured, like, I when I was building this, I was, okay, so we we're going to have side gunners, but just having a TNT cannon to the side is going to be very boring. So I... Uh, yeah, I decided, okay, so should add something uh, a bit more interesting to the left side. Uh, so there's more triggers to fire. And um, yeah, I made the Tomahawk missile launcher. And I already had the uh, torpedo launcher at that point underneath. So I already kind of knew ways of triggering it. And like the trigger mechanism here, it looks complicated and it is complicated. Because you have to imagine that there's literally a signal. There's a signal traveling from down here uh, that triggers this piston, that triggers these pistons, that triggers this piston, that triggers that piston, which fires it downward. But you have to. Okay, so that's the trigger mechanism. That's fine and all. 
but it has to be set and it has to be movable because all the sort of quotation marks uh, wiring has to be able to move because I cannot use any redstone dust or repeaters in the in the build. Um, and yeah, making movable wiring is uh, is really tricky. And I don't think I've really seen anyone else do it yet. But I'm hoping that more people will uh, get interested in uh, yeah slime stone, just the uh, redstone without any redstone dust or repeaters. But yeah, moving back to this one. Um, the trigger mechanism. This is uh, like the other one. Is this essentially one-time use only? Um, and I'm using uh, uh, small flying machines to move this segment forward uh, one bit, and uh, it's sequential, so the other one has to be moved forward two bits. Um, but what's basically happening is there's these sort of plus signs here. Uh, as soon as they're moved, they, they trigger. But as it triggers now, it's actually too far away to activate this piston and to activate that piston. But as I move the entire sort of launcher structure, structure one, one forward, um, they will actually reach the blocks they need to reach. And like this has to get pushed down and this block has to be retracted because of the 12 block push limit. Uh, that's something similar happens with the torpedo. Um, but that's basically what you have here. So what you can see is you can see the entire structure moves forward. And yeah, this will have triggered that. And, and like this will have triggered that, like so. And uh, this torpedo, I have a video on that as well, uh, is a bit more destructive, less collateral damage. Uh, there's actually one really derpy TNT. The one, the TNT in the back is going to fly somewhere weird. Uh, if you don't want that, you could remove it. But um, yeah, if you have a, a wall, this will uh, do lots of damage to it. Uh, you actually need two blocks to stop it. But yeah, as soon as this triggers, seeing as the TNT is a big, bit backward, the, uh, the TNT at the front will... Uh, if it's near the wall, really cause a lot of damage there. And that's the uh, the TNT I mentioned. That's actually a bit dangerous because if you fire it too close to Gargantua, there is a chance that it will uh, yeah, damage it. And if Gargantua takes only the slightest amount of damage, uh, it will basically go to a halt at some point. Um, so let's fire the other one as well. I'm um, going just gonna let this one fly off into the distance. Um, but yeah, seeing as the uh, mechanics are the way they are, uh, like I figured I might have been able to um, um, sort of make a reload station. That was my initial thought, but then I looked closer to what I had and uh, um, like reloading the missiles is not really an option. Um, uh, technically, I think I could reload the, the bottom miss missile, but uh, not, not the one uh, above, unfortunately. Because if I start moving, the, uh, the missile launcher will uh, stay behind one block and then start moving again. So yeah, you could... You could uh, if I stop it again now... You can see it's it's uh, yeah kind of still in the position where mm, actually it doesn't look too horrible, but yeah, something maybe for the future. I'm I'm actually gonna uh, stop this one because it's gonna cause lag for me when I reach the end or when it reaches the the chunks. Uh, let's actually just blow it up. Good enough. Okay, so that's the uh, the left side. Now I wanted the right gunner to also not be boring, uh, because I mean the BO2 cannon is uh, is awesome. It's it's actually the uh, the front cannon. You can only fire when it's moving. Like you, you can't fire it when it's stationary. But the uh, yeah the BO2 cannon you can actually fire when it's stationary. So you when you're next to a bunker or something and you want to just 
hammer it down with TNT, then uh, this is the weapon of choice. Because uh, there's like, an, you can, depending on how much TNT you have in your inventory, you can just keep placing it. Uh, but yeah, that uh, you got two triggers. Uh, so again, it's multi-range and, uh, you know, can fire. Um, but there's another trigger. It's the, the one over here. And yeah, this one actually activates the, uh, the Deagle repeater cannon. Um, it has six shots, and as for wiring, I, it, it turns out that sending a signal forward is actually a lot more difficult than sending a signal backward in a construction. Um, uh, especially a signal that you can reuse, because the, the, if you want to only use it once, the missile launcher, that was, was, that was very easy. Um, but making a signal travel forward that uh, is uh, usable more than uh, you know two, two times, pretty much, uh, it's very difficult. Um, another thing that was difficult was how how to actually <laughs> have a clip with uh, over six six shots. Um, and yeah, I will show you the mechanics in a bit. But I I really really like. Uh, the way that uh, the signal is transferred forward, especially when it's moving. Um, you have to, it has six shots, but if you want to fire the entire clip and you want to reset it, you have to uh, activate it uh, six, uh, eight, eight times in total. And you can do it fairly fast, so it's six. And as you can see, there's actually sand falling down now. It's uh, kind of like a shell, I guess. And uh, that was necessary. That was not for aesthetics. That is fully functional falling sand. Um, and that's eight. Eight to reset it. Because again, like the TNT cannon, as long as this piston or these pistons are extended and you start moving, the whole, the whole thing crashes down. Uh, and you end up with uh, quite a deep crater so if uh, there are missing on the ground and you want to make a hole to uh, charge charge the enemy uh, you can do that there's still one TNT there and the TNT that's here is basically just for the, the next clip already uh, so you can't fire that it has seven use six and then you add six more you have seven again you fire six etc um, so yeah, let's actually start moving again. It's like I have to kind of stop pistons from firing, so that's why I have this piston extending. Uh, because if I didn't, then uh, it would fire when moving. And this is also like, <laughs> I don't know, I just think it's really cool. Um, yeah, and after you walk a bit, and it's like the sand that fell down, after you've walked a bit, you can, uh, you can reload it, uh, just stop it for a bit. And squeezing in a pathway to be able to reload it was also a, a pain. And just imagine, like, all I wanted, I was, I wanted to walk from here all the way to the, the gun at the front that took probably like two hours because every time I added something like that it meant changing like 15 other things and, and that's how basically this whole thing came together it's want to add something run into a problem and then just have to redesign everything around it or just shift stuff around. Uh, but yeah, to reload it, what you want to do is you want to put sand on these uh, quartz blocks. Then as soon as you place TNT here, this thing will actually move forward. And then you just fill it up with uh, TNT. And um, how this thing works is, well, this is a flying machine. And I think I'm actually going to rebuild it down on the ground. Um, 
I don't need that. Let's get one of those. I don't need that. Let's get one of those. So I use these a lot. I think they're awesome um, because they're slow, and slow is good because this whole thing is things happening in a, in an order. And if I wanted things to happen after, like a lot time with a lot of delay, uh, you basically end up with sort of rows of these flying machines next to each other. And because they take so long, it takes very long for the normal pistons to fire forward. And I pretty much use them everywhere. I can see them there. I can see them there. I can see them here. It's just a line of delay and stuff. They're they're awesome. Uh, I'm sorry for the <laughs> my nose, but uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the idea is that if I have something like this, uh, let's actually and this one there. And uh, let's see, let's actually get some TNT, because why not? Now, whenever this piston gets an update, it will move one block. But if I move this slime block row of slime block forward, that's exactly what happens. It gets updated. Now, if I... Wondering if I place them too far apart. Yeah, this this actually has to be there. Sorry. <laughs> um, now if I do it again, again update it. If I do it again, still update it. But the cool thing is the initial sand actually takes along the second piece of sand because the sand gets uh, stuck to this slime lock. So. This will pretty much go uh, go forward until a limit, and that's actually also the point where I want it to fall down. So as you can see, the the sand moves forward, and there's a little gap here where it falls down. So sand is actually extremely useful if you want to get rid of blocks at a certain distance. The uh, precision bomber also had a piece of sand that I needed to fall down to make room for the uh, uh, the activator to basically just trigger more TNT. Um, but that is the, uh, the principle of that. So yeah, um, the uh, download is in the yeah in the description of the video, the schematic as well. Um, yeah, you can uh, just paste them in. They're not directional sensitive, and if you want to do battle with them, it's paste multiple in the world and, and fire. Uh, but what I did actually want to show is, uh, and you guys will find this silly, but like, if you want to disable a Gargantua, it's fairly simple. Uh, like, it can handle two high blocks, but if I just anywhere in the pathway, roughly, place a block. There is a fairly good chance, depending on, uh, yeah, kind of the uh, uh, the 12 block push limit that it will break. Pistons can only push 12 blocks, so as soon as they they have more than 12 blocks, like for instance here, you see it jams. Um, it just stops. And the whole machine work uh, will basically just implode slowly. Those are graphical glitches, by the way. You have to ignore those. But yeah, congratulations. You used one sand block to disable Gargantua. I mean, the guns still work, though, probably for the most part. Um, but uh, yeah, it can, can no longer move. And it is at this point also 
not f feasible to fix it. Like, it's better to just load a new game if you want to use it after it, it has crashed like this. Um, because there's so many slime blocks that are now stuck to each other that shouldn't be stuck to each other. You can see pistons being extended here. Um, so it's a very, very delicate machine. And um, I get people asking, yeah, yeah, you should totally add armor and stuff, but adding armor to this is completely, utterly useless. If you can just stop it by, with one sandstone block. Like, you don't even have to blow it up. But to me, that's not the point of this build. I built a fucking robot with TNT cannons. And it's more of an, uh, yeah proof of concept as to actually people using this infection warfare to blow to blow other people up like this is so delicate it's just no it's more like a switch watch in a way uh, but it's cool so and I might actually uh, incorporate this in maybe a map in the future where you have to use this to do a perform a mission or something but uh, that, that's something for the future Anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Like, uh, like I already said, download link is in the description. Fully functional, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Bye, bye.